we've done this numerous times to other people and it's, you know, they can't just let them back out. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. Now at five, an Army veteran who was viciously beaten and left unconscious outside of his San Francisco home is in disbelief that the man he says was behind this attack and others could be released on a diversion program. Tonight, the victim is speaking out about the attack one day before his alleged assailant is said to appear before a judge. Good evening. I'm Christina Rendon. And I'm Mike Meebach. Residents of the Lower Knob Hill neighborhood who know the suspect are not surprised to hear about this attack. KTVU investigative reporter Evan Cernofsky spoke to the victim. He's live here. In studio with the story. Evan? Yeah, Mike, Christina, the defendant in this case is seeking to get released on a mental health diversion program. He has a long criminal history before this attack and provoked dozens of complaints from neighbors who warned the city that something bad could go down. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. Traumatic brain injury fractured uh, my orbital, broke my nose. Um, but don't even remember uh, the four or five days that I was in the hospital. Emil OJ is an Army veteran and longtime bartender in San Francisco. He says he's lucky to be alive after he was attacked on the street outside his San Francisco apartment in June. He says he was punched and fell unconscious, but the beating continued. I was just laying on the sidewalk unconscious, and then he picked me up and drug me down the corner. And people thought he was trying to wake me up. But he was banging my head on the light post. For the last seven months, OJ has been recuperating from injuries. Doctors weren't sure he would even survive. He now has a large prosthetic in his head from where his skull was removed while he was in the ICU. The doctors and nurses informed me that uh, two brain surgeries and a portion of my skull replaced. Police arrested 45 year old Hasira Sutton shortly after the attack. He's facing charges of assault and battery, causing great bodily injury. Sutton has a long history with law enforcement, including three prior felony strikes on his record. Police released this picture of him after he was arrested on suspicion of stabbing a woman unprovoked on 5th and Market in 2019. I called the cops for him more than 20 times. His arrest in the attack on OJ came as no surprise to the people in this lower Knob Hill neighborhood where he slept. Every restaurant, every neighborhood, they, the whole neighborhood, they complain about him. Records show neighbors have written more than 50 letters to the city complaining about Sutton's behavior over the years. It's a story that seems to happen all the time in San Francisco. Somebody has mental health issues, they're homeless, and they're acting violently, but the city doesn't provide any meaningful interventions. Well, now a man is seriously injured, and the suspect is facing major prison time. Sutton's public defender is seeking to get her client released on a mental health diversion program. He's due in court for the hearing on Friday. In a statement, Sutton's attorney says her client is the victim. Quote, the truth will come to light in court through video evidence showing that the alleged victim instigated the incident as he began verbally harassing and standing over Mr. Sutton, who was asleep on the sidewalk. Mr. Sutton made several attempts to remove himself from this aggressive situation before it escalated. Yet he's the one who's been in jail for the past seven months awaiting trial. This is yet another example of how vulnerable unhoused people are in our city and often fall victim to false narratives and criminalization. OJ says he'll be in court on Friday to speak out against Sutton's release. In the meantime, he's trying to get his life back on track and hopes to get back to work. I do feel like better me than somebody else. I don't know too many people that would have been able to handle the beating and, and walk away from it. Now, the district attorney's office is opposing sending the defendant to a mental health diversion program. If the judge tomorrow agrees, the case is set to go to trial next week. Mike, Christina? Video evidence. That was in the statement from the public defender. Uh, have you seen any video of the actual incident? Uh, Mike, we haven't seen the video yet, but this has already gone through a per preliminary hearing, and the prosecution has sought successfully to hold the defendant here uh, pre-trial without bail. So a judge has seen it, a judge has reviewed that, and determined that there's enough evidence here to take right. those pretty drastic steps. All right, we'll find out more tomorrow. Evan, thank you.